Hi there, good afternoon, myself and Moy and today I'm here to explain to people regarding population ecology. So it's good afternoon from my side because the time that I'm recording this video it's afternoon. So it may be good evening, good night, good morning, anything for you. That depends on you. Anyway, so population ecology, this entire topic would be very easy to understand if you just start from understanding the basics. That means we have to first understand what is ecology. Then we will come to its specialization that is population ecology. So you see, ecology, it's a subject of biology that specifically deals regarding the uh, abiotic and biotic uh, component of the environment. That means uh, it, it basically explains the way that organisms behave to their habitat. So you can sort of understand it in a way that if you go to a certain area and you observe the feeding habit, the reproduction uh, of a certain like species of cow that means you are just understanding the ecological aspect of the population so that is all regarding ecology as a whole that means in the most simplest form you can define ecology as uh, the subject that deals with the interaction between organism and its uh, environment to which it's exposed so now let us uh, get a bit specific and understand regarding population ecology so the things are very easy that means if you can understand what is ecology and if you apply the concepts of ecology to a population that means a group of individual having like uh, a group of similar individuals like uh, means uh, individuals belonging to a, a single species then you get to understand regarding population ecology so i've written a very short definition regarding what a population actually is and i think we must start from here so the definition says that a population is a group of individual belonging to a single species that interbreed among themselves and occupies a functional role in a community. So this entire definition will be very easy to understand if we just um, like split the definition into two or three parts. So the first part of the definition says that a population is a group of individuals belonging to a single species. That means the primary requirement of any population based study is that there must be individuals belonging to a single species. And this is very obvious. I mean, you cannot uh, include orangutans in a human population. This is, uh, it, it's just the fact of common sense, isn't it? And the second part of the uh, definition says that uh, they must interbreed among themselves. You can see this line that they must interbreed among themselves. And this is also very important requirement because you see, the reason that a population exists is because of reproduction. If there is no reproduction, then there would be no continuity of species and there would be no concept of population because individuals would keep on dying, isn't it? Therefore, reproduction is very necessary. That means if you have a group of organisms who belong to a single species uh, accumulated in a certain area, they must reproduce for continuity of their species. Uh, for and reproduction is very essential in that uh, in that context therefore uh, the second part of the definition like uh, it focuses on the importance of in reproduction in a population and the last line says that they occupy a functional role in a community and this is also very true because you see a community is an association of several populations that are like sort of accumulated in an area that means uh, if you go to a park you don't expect to see only one sort of bird uh, in the entire park isn't it you get, get to see various types of birds such as sparrows crows cuckoo coal everything else so that's the fact so that's a like diversified community and each of these species uh, belonging to a community has certain role in that community that means it is helping in the flow of energy it is helping in nutrient cycling and all those other basic things that we understand uh, under ecosystem ecology or you can say under community ecology also so <clears throat> that is the uh, i mean that only the third line explains that uh, organisms belonging to a population must have a functional role in a community so this entirely summarizes what a population is so just to get a brief overview uh, the primary requirement of population is that there must be individuals belonging to a single species the secondary not the secondary i mean the second important factor is that they must interbreed among themselves and the third important thing is that they must occupy a functional role in a community okay so now proceeding further there are two types of uh, population the first is your unitary population and the second is a modular population 
let's not go through the definition and see a short diagram i know this is a very uh, like very basic diagram <laughs> but um, i've tried to draw, draw better diagram and like this is my best i'm sorry for having very bad drawing skills so you see if you just uh, consider this diagram assume that this uh, like rounded structure is your zygote and this is uh, an individual that is created from the zygote so in unitary population what happens is like every zygote like uh, overall from its developmental stages when it will rapidly divide this would give rise to only one sort of organism that means this human is being produced only by repeated division of this zygote okay so this is the concept of unitary organism and if certain unitary organisms accumulate to create a population that would be your unitary population so this is the basic uh, like basic thing that you need to understand now let us uh, take this uh, example of the second uh, diagram and i don't know what sort of organism is, is this but uh, i've just drawn this to understand the concept so you see if you just uh, assume that uh, this rounded structure sorry for that this rounded structure is a zygote and uh, these are the organisms that are being created so you can get some sort of idea uh, this is an example of modular population where one zygote repeatedly divides to give rise to several types of not several types i mean several organisms that accumulate in a certain place so uh, that's the basic difference between unitary and modular population that means in unitary population there would be individuals who would be created by repeated divisions of a single zygote one zygote one individual that's the basic fact whereas in modular population one zygote can give rise to uh, several individuals who would be attached in some form that means uh, these are like more like colonial forms if you just remember what wall box is it's a colonial algae where several organisms are accumulated in a mucilaginous sheath isn't it so that's the difference between unitary and pop, uh, modular population now let us get to read this definition so you see if you read the definition of unitary population it says that in unitary population repeated divisions of a single zygote give rise to a single individual and this is very basic as i have previously told you and the examples can be your humans cows goats etc that means vertebrates uh, as a whole they are mostly composed of unitary organisms okay so now the definition of modular population here a zygote divides to give rise to several individuals attached in some form this is also very true as as we have seen in the previous diagram and if you want to know the examples there can be colonial algae like wall box i previously told you regarding wall box and there can be uh, like micro colony or macro colony of bacteria that means bacteria also sort of uh, create certain colonies isn't it and we are talking about those colonies then polymorphism in obelia polymorphism uh, is a phenomenon like where distinct types of individuals are created from one uh, from one organism that means uh, uh, talking about silent traits like uh, ovalia so there they have both polyp and medusa present so polyp and medusa these are two distinct types of uh, individuals who remain attached like the medusa would be embedded in the polypoid body of uh, ovalia and then they can like sort of uh, detach from the detached from the ovalia means the mature structure of ovalia having the polyp body so that they can freely leave so that's also another example that is your polymorphism in ovalia and the last example is your grasses attached by stolons so these are like basic examples that if you remembered would definitely help you to write a better answer so let us uh, go through the other points you see unitary population have genetically and physiologically distinct individuals this is not the case in modular population and this thing is very true because you see like if you have two zygotes you are very certain that in unitary population if there are two zygotes there would be two distinct individuals created from those two zygotes so there is less chances that both of the organisms created from uh, from those variable zygotes would be similar in some form whereas if you talk about modular population there one zygote only like gives rise to several individuals so there can be certain association or certain similarities between the organisms or the offsprings and uh, there's another point that says that modular population poses a pattern of budding or branching of modules which may detach to live as a separate individual 
I previously told you regarding Obelia and how in the polypoid body of Obelia the medusa is present and then they detach to live as a free free living uh, individual and this is also very like very distinct in colonial forms if you talk about uh, bacteria and like other unicellular organisms they also possess budding then uh, other other sorts of reproduction asexual modes of reproduction fission and all that so uh, this is like another another uh, you can say characteristic of a modular population that organisms belonging to modular population they can either detach or they can also like live with the parent organism so that's all regarding this video here we have discussed regarding what population is and uh, several types of population that is a unitary modular and thirdly we uh, okay there's no there's no third option <laughs> we only discussed about these two things so in the next video we would be discussing about certain characteristics of population okay thank you for watching this video